everyone and welcome back to another video. Today I'm really excited to be talking to you guys about some of my favorite series in biblical fiction. So that's trilogies, duologies, multi-book series um, in biblical fiction that I think are really amazing and why I like them and why I love them. These are I guess kind of in order from like most favorite to second most favorite and third most favorite and fourth most favorite and so on and so forth. So they are in order of like how much I enjoyed them but I enjoyed them all immensely and I wouldn't recommend them to you unless they were like all super high up there reads for me um, just because that's how I am. Um, I wouldn't put them in the video if I didn't think they were must reads for everyone. So they're in order of like personal favorites, but they're all good and amazing. And I think you should check them out. So let's just dive right into it. The first one on this list is The Restoration Chronicles by Lynn Austin. So that's a three book series, Return to Me, Keepers of the Covenant, and On This Foundation, all by Lynn Austin. And can we just take a minute to appreciate and love on these book covers for a second? Because conceptually, I think these are possibly my favorite covers ever in biblical fiction. I love how creative it is. It's something different, unique, original. It's not just, you know, like a face or a cover model. There's like a whole scene and just the lighting and the sunsets and the hues on all of the covers. And I love how they used silhouettes. I think a lot of times in biblical fiction um, and Christian fiction in general, I think this is because the majority of readers of Christian fiction are usually or typically women. Um, not that they're all women. I know that there are a lot of um, guys who subscribe to this channel and guys who read Christian fiction and biblical fiction and all those kinds of things. But I think just demographically speaking, most of these covers are geared towards women, which is why they most feature women on the covers and while there are women in these stories in these books in this series it's a very um big cast of characters but I love that even in going for you know men on the covers they found a creative way to do that it's like silhouetted and it makes the book stand out and look really amazing um that's something that I love but what I love about this series content wise is this series takes place um it's a book it's a book series about the prophets of Israel after and during captivity of the Israelites and going back to Jerusalem and back to Israel and rebuilding um from captivity and and one, I love that time setting because that's something that I can get really easily confused about if I'm just reading the Bible by myself or, you know, not going through it with like a pastor or a um, a teacher of some kind. It Like the timelines get confusing. So I love these books because they help me to keep that timeline kind of straight and figure out, okay, which prophets went with which stories in the Bible or time periods or places, um, if you know what I mean. But something else that I love about this book and these this book actually is that the they're so multi-generational there's younger characters and there's older characters and I just really love how the author explores that dichotomy between like the older people who've lived a long time who maybe know like quote unquote the error of their ways or they know a lot about life and then younger characters who are sort of coming into their own and I love how she balances that there's something that's very classic and timeless about that to me and I'm a huge fan of multi-generational storytelling in general. Like, I think a lot of us can think of like classics like Anne of Green Gables where you have the very young Anne and the older Matthew and Marilla and just that dynamic kind of thing. Um, I love dynamics like that in books and media and in life. Um, I think there's a lot of wisdom to be shared. And that's the thing, guys, is that these books are full full, full of wisdom. The Bible teaching in these books and the, like the spiritual lessons in these books um, to some might be considered maybe a little bit heavy, but I think that's not the case at all in my opinion. It's so well done. It's so scripturally rich. Each page just kind of drops truth bomb after truth bomb after truth bomb. Um, and it's just so good, so good. And um, I really loved these books. I binge read these when I was in college. I used to sneak them into my economics and math classes and uh, read during the economics lectures. I'm sorry to my uh, freshman year economy professor. Uh, if you are watching, he actually ended up though, it's a good story, guys. It's a good story. He actually ended up asking me what I was always reading because he noticed and you know he knew that economics wasn't my strong suit anyways um and we kind of bonded a little bit over books which was nice and I did pass the class just so you're aware I did pass the class um so no problems there 
The next series in this episode is actually three series, but the reason that I'm including it as one is because they all take place in the same universe. Now, for books like The Restoration Chronicles and a couple of other series on this list, you don't have to read them in order. You don't even have to read them all if you don't want to. You can sort of just uh, choose to read which ones you want to read. In my opinion, you should read all of Connie Lynn Cassette's books in publication date order. So the series here, the overall series, is Connie Lynn Cassette books. And that is the Out From Egypt trilogy, followed by the Cities of Refuge series, and completed most recently by the Covenant House duology. So they don't, they don't all take place in the same time period. They don't all take place in the same location, but they are all connected somehow. Um, for instance, in Out from Egypt, there is a character introduced that becomes the main character in the Cities of Refuge series many, many years later. And in the Covenant House series, there is a character who is related to a character in the Out from Egypt series. Um, and in, you know, Cities of Refuge, there's multiple callbacks and tie-ins to the Out from Egypt series and the Covenant House and all of this stuff. They all set each other up. And I think that you could read them individually or out of order or in any order that you choose to. Um, all of the books work like that. But in my opinion, as a reader, I love finding, you know, Easter eggs and hidden things and like hidden trivia, I guess you could say, when you're reading and you're like, oh my goodness, that's totally a reference to Shadow of the Storm book two in the Out from Egypt series. I love finding finding stuff like that. Um, that's like totally my jam. And like the Connie Lynn Cassette bookish universe is the universe I want to exist in all the time. Her books are so good and so binge readable in general, but they're such a good like overarching. It's like watching a TV show of like biblical time characters. Um, and I love it because every time a new book comes out, it's like a new episode in this like overarching saga. And that makes me really happy and really excited just to see like, oh, how is she going to tie it in with the others? How is it going to be connected? So they all take place in the same universe, but you don't have to read them all to understand them all. I just think you should. Um, something I love about Connie Lynn Cassette's books is that they're usually first person narrative. They're super engaging. Um, um, and her characters are so well developed. And there's also, you know, there's romance uh, in a good way, guys. And there's also a lot of adventure and high stakes. And um, there's some great lessons to be learned as well. But to me, I just love like the adventure stories and the the grand journeys the characters go on. I love, 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 love it. And a big selling point for these books for me is that they're all in the same universe. And if you know, you're, if you like things like, you know, the Marvel Cinematic Universe or um, big series where you kind of have to like piece all the dots together yourself, you would like Connie Lynn Cassette's books. Um, so, you know, you could read any one of these series, but in my opinion, you get the most out of them if you read them in publication date order. And it makes it fun to discover like who's related to who and how and why and like what Easter eggs are in there and stuff as well. So the next series that I wanna talk about in this video is books by Barbara M. Britton. And she has two series and I'm including them both. I think you should read all of her books, but I'm including both of the series here. And the first one is Tribes of Israel and the second one is Daughters of Zelophehad. Now the Tribes of Israel series is not connected. The characters aren't connected with each other. So you can read those books out of order. You can read just one if you want to. If you're gonna read one from the Tribes of Israel series, I would probably super highly recommend Building Benjamin because it's fascinating historically like wow there's so much that was like my eyes were opened to just contextually within that story and the time period it was taking place and I'm not going to say anything else about it because of spoilers but definitely Building Benjamin and Providence are two of my favorites uh, by Barbara and um, the Tribes of Israel series is really good but you don't necessarily have to read those books in order which is nice if you just want to give like a test run to Barbara's books and you've never read them before if you are going to read any two or three of her books, I would recommend Building Benjamin, Lioness, and Providence in that order um, if you were just getting started because those are my favorites. Um, and the next series is the Daughters of Zelophehad series, and that is a series about five daughters, I think. I could be misremembering the number, but I think five daughters, 
Um, and it's a true, well, it's based on a true biblical account of the daughters of Zelophehad and how the Lord provided for them as they were coming out of Exodus. And they're in the Bible. They are named. Their story is written in the Bible, which is really cool. If you've never heard of them before, it's a really unique series. And they're all, all of her books are full of strong female characters and super great kind of role model characters, I would say. Um, I would consider these books really good for like YA or teens, maybe, in my opinion, especially the Daughters of the Lofahad series. Um, they're just really engaging. They're not too big. They're not super dense books, guys. They're like, um, they're smaller than like the average biblical fiction book. So that means that they're really easy to read in like one or two sittings. In my opinion, they're super easy to binge read. They're a little bit addicting. So if you get one, you better get six. Um, and they're just really great and enjoyable. Um, in terms of like my favorite series by Barbara, I would probably say Daughters of Zelophehad, but my favorite books by Barbara are in the Tribes of Israel series, if that makes sense. Just because the Daughters of Zelophehad series is like interconnected and it's one continuous story, uh, whereas the Tribes of Israel series is not super connected and you could read all of them on their own and they would stand up and hold up. So I highly recommend you read books by Barbara M. Britton. She is so amazing. She's so sweet to talk to, so nice, has such a lovely heart, and her books reflect that as well. The next series that I want to talk about in this video is a duology, and you were probably already expecting this one, so I'm not going to talk about it too much, but that is the Treasures of the Nile duology, which is by Misu Andrews, and it consists of the Pharaoh's Daughter and Miriam. And as far as I'm aware, Misu Andrews doesn't necessarily have many, like, full-on interconnected series is. Um, she has like books that, you know, are a part of a series, but maybe you don't have to read all of them or um, books that are a series, like duologies, like smaller, smaller um, series is. But in terms of like my favorite, it would definitely be Treasures of the Nile. It's an Exodus retelling about the Pharaoh's daughter and Miriam. You should read both of them, but I have to say what impresses me about this book series so much is actually how she handles Miriam. And in the book, Miriam is portrayed as an older, mature woman, so it doesn't necessarily follow her whole life as much as it does follow her later years from like the time of Moses returning up until the Exodus and when all of that takes place. And I really liked that perspective. I feel like we don't have enough books with um, older characters in them, older sort of role model characters. Uh, we have a lot of, you know, younger characters and, you know, middle-aged characters, but in terms of like older characters that we can look up to or emulate. I don't think that those exist uh, a ton, um, which goes kind of goes back to why I love the Restoration Chronicles so much because I just love exploring different dynamics and different ages and ranges. But I love how she handles Miriam's story. She offers so much wit and wisdom between those pages and it's just fascinating to read. It's a beautiful, it's relatable no matter what age you are and it gives you so much insight into that time period. And it's definitely hands down my my favorite biblical fiction take on the Exodus ever, the complete duology. You don't have to read these books necessarily as a series either, but I think that you should just because, you know, they are kind of connected. It is the same story, but both of them focus on different characters and they hold up on their own. So uh, Treasures of the Nile series is a 10 out of 10 for me. And lastly, in this book uh, video, we have Wives of the Patriarchs by Jill Eileen Smith. And this is a trilogy about Sarah, Rachel, and Rebecca the wives of the patriarchs, so Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. <laughs> and if you are looking for biblical fiction books set during that time period in Genesis, so these are the ones that I usually end up recommending because I like them a lot. Um, these are my favorite books by Jill Eileen Smith. I have read her more recent books. I have enjoyed the Daughters of the Promised Land series, but this is my favorite trilogy by Jill Eileen Smith. And usually if I'm reading a Jill Eileen Smith book right now, I will always end up comparing it to one of these books because I liked them so much. I enjoyed them so thoroughly. And I love these books because Genesis and all the stuff that happened in that book is just so complicated. Like when you read about it, God asks these people to do so many crazy things things and he asks them to go to so many different lengths and there's so much you know drama that happens like these are really dramatic stories in the bible guys and what i love about these books is just how real they make that drama i think it's easy to you know read a book where or read in the bible where it says god told abraham to build an altar for isaac and just kind of read it and get to the end of the story but again what i love about these books and all biblical fiction is that that wasn't just a few sentences 
pages on a page for them. That was something they had to live through. And I love how these books bring that period to life in a way that's understandable, in a way that where we can look at it and go, oh, I get why this is significant or that is significant. Um, and just kind of clears up for me personally, um, a lot of uh, questions that I've had about uh, Genesis, maybe when I was younger and that kind of time period. Not, you know, not in such a way that like, oh, I read these fictional books and now I understand the Bible. That's not what I'm saying at all. And I don't think that fiction reading should ever replace personal Bible study or going through the Bible with maybe a pastor or a teacher or a, a, a mentor of some kind. I don't think that um, that should ever be the case. But for me, being able to read it out in story form helped me connect the context better and the historical context and to be able to kind of understand more of like okay why would this have been significant like if I had lived in that time period why would that have been significant to me and it helps me kind of make the stories a little bit more personal um, understanding those historical details and things like that so Um, Wives of the Patriarchs is my favorite Jill Eileen Smith series. These are my favorite Jill Eileen Smith books, and uh, I do recommend them as well. So those are five of my favorite biblical fiction-ish series. Um, Maybe not five, because I included a couple by Barbara and a couple by Connie Lynn, but five groupings of biblical fiction books that I think you guys definitely need to read. If you've read any of these, be sure to let me know down in the comments. I would love to hear about it. What were your thoughts? Did you enjoy them? Um, have you read any books by Barbara and Britton yet? Because I'm currently, I guess that's kind of my summer mission right now is to just get everyone to read those books because you are in desperate need. <laughs> so anyways, let me know what you guys thought of this video. What else you would like to see from me? What more videos? What uh, kinds of recommendations would you like to hear? All of my other links, information, handles, and everything like that will be in the description box below and on the end screen of this video. Thank you guys again so much for watching and I will talk to you later.